Welcome back to another Bellows Blades knife review. I have previously done a review on this knife here that you see in front of you, the Cold Steel Chaos Bowie knife. And um, today I wanna take a look at its smaller or little brother, but no less cool, the Cold Steel uh, Chaos, uh, the, the Cold Steel Chaos Tonto. So this knife is obviously a little bit smaller than the Bowie knife. Uh, but still has that same uh, type of handle with the kind of trench knife style with the D-shaped guard on it. And so I wanted to take a look at this knife today just real quickly and do a quick review on it. Um, I do prefer the Bowie. I'm going to say right off the top that, that out of these two knives, that is my favorite. Uh, but I definitely still really like this knife as well. Uh, like I said, it's a little smaller. I think that the Bowie knife has a blade that is, uh, I believe, 10 and a half inches, and this one is seven and a half inches, so it is a shorter blade overall compared to the Bowie knife. Uh, but like I said, in the Chaos series line, still a great knife um, for a fixed blade if it's something that you're looking for. Uh, honestly, let's face it, unless you're planning on somehow having hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, these type of knives don't serve a lot of purpose for the average person in everyday life. Um, don't really need the what uh, Cold Steel calls the skull crusher here on the end, the D guard here. Um, just this type of knife in general is overkill for practical purposes, you know. But that doesn't change the fact that, especially if you're someone who collects knives, it's a cool knife to collect. Uh, they are pretty neat knives. Uh, so this thing is obviously not going to be a great bush crafting knife or anything like that there are much better knives for that but nonetheless if you're looking for a cool kind of fighting style knife this is a really really great option um as far as the knife itself it is like i said it comes in the chaos line so it's very similar in a lot of aspects uh still made out of cold steel's sk5 carbon steel so a nice high carbon steel blade has their black, I believe they call it Tough X coating on it to protect it um, from rusting or anything like that. Uh, because high carbon steel will rust fairly easily, so they've got it coated for you, which is a nice touch. It does come with the SecureX sheath, uh, which is just their synthetic kind of plastic style sheath. Has a lot of attachment points on it. Uh, if you're into that, you know, you've got options there as well. Overall, this thing weighs 17 ounces, so it is actually quite a bit lighter, uh, as well as smaller. Obviously, it's it's also lighter than the Chaos Bowie is. Uh, so it actually it doesn't feel heavy in the hand at all, especially considering you've got that, you know, big, uh, well, I say metal, big aluminum D-guard on there. Uh, you would think it would weigh a lot more than it does. It actually feels fairly light in the hand. Um, so... Guys, I mean, just as, as far as a, a review for a knife like this, there's not much to say about it. You either like it or you don't. You're going to want to buy one or you're not. Um, is it a good quality knife? Yes, most of the knives from Cold Steel are going to be decent quality. With this high carbon steel blade, it should be able to take a lot of abuse. Now, I have seen some videos online where people have managed to break these. Um, and I would just argue that as somebody who, who has forged some knives as a hobby on the side... Um, you can always get a lemon. You never know when there's a small micro fracture, stress crack in a knife until the blade breaks. And then you can look at that grain structure and see what happened. Um, so is it possible that yes, you could break this knife? Absolutely. It's weak points, probably going to be the tang here. Um, but from all my experience with cold steels, high carbon steel knives, they can take a lot of abuse. The ones that I have abused, this is not one of the ones I've abused, but I have other knives with the same steel that I have done a lot of abuse to, and they've always been able to kind of hold up to that abuse. Uh, so I would expect the same from this. Now, one of the questions that I had gotten uh, from a commenter on the Chaos Bowie review was had I ever taken the handle off? And the answer was no, I had not ever done that, had no reason to, uh, but they wanted to see what it looked like off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one apart so that we can take a look at that handle and the tang and what that looks like. I will say that although I haven't taken it off before the video, I did go ahead and loosen this skull crusher nut. And the reason for that was because exactly as I expected, it was extremely, extremely difficult to break. Uh, so I did finally get it to kind of break loose here using a wrench and uh i was able to get that you know get that loosened but 
it was something I didn't want to really do on video um, without kind of making sure that I could get it loose first. So that's what I did. I apologize for the squeaking. So you can see here they had some, some kind of Loctite on this, which uh, I'm not going to do it here on the video when I put it back together, but I will tear this back apart then and put some Loctite on all the pieces that I loosen up because I definitely don't want those to be loose going forward, right? Um, so hopefully these things here I'll be able to break without too much trouble. And of course, you're going to want to be fairly careful with this thing um, as you don't want to cut yourself as you're messing with it. Speaking of which, I may break this rest of this thing apart off camera because I'm not 100% sure how these things come out. Uh, and I don't want to be trying to worry about the camera and also worry about not cutting myself. So I'm going to pause it a second here while I tear this thing apart and then I'll come back up on the camera. All right, guys, well, I'm back and I'm going to have to admit defeat. Um, <laughs> the commenter had said that they'd never seen one with the handle off and I think that's because it's next to impossible to do. Um, so there's two There's two little pins that go down in here that I had to use a punch to get these out, right? Which I went ahead and did. And then uh, my thought was that once those were out, I could somehow get the blade loose enough to slide out of the handle. But that's not happening, guys. I, uh, I tried multiple things. I took this thing and whacked it in every direction I could against a tree stump, back, side to side, front and back. Uh, stabbed it, hit it on the butt. There's no, this thing doesn't have any screws in it and there's no wobble at all. Um, I put it in a vise and hammered on it with a rubber mallet to try and drive the handle off and I got no movement whatsoever. Um, honestly, I don't know how I would take this handle off without destroying the knife. And I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting that once you took out all these screws and these pens, that you'd be able to get this blade to kind of just slide out of the handle. I'm assuming it has a fairly thin tang that goes down through the handle like that with the two holes to line up. That's my assumption, but I don't know how you would get it out. The only other thing I could think of is if this thing is two pieces, and clamp together and then they put the black coating over top of the aluminum but you can almost see where there might be a seam here but I don't see anything that looks like it would have been a seam in the back so I don't know for sure that that's how they did it but I will say that it, I'm not able to get this handle off I tried everything I knew how to do and I've got like I said I've no wiggle in this blade at all after banging on it and hitting it uh, on a tree stump and securing it with a vise and hammering on it with a rubber mallet. I mean, there's no wobble or play at all. So I don't think this handle is really meant to be removed. It looks like it should be uh, with the screws in it and everything. It looks like it should be, you know, removable, but I was not able to get it to come off. So I have to apologize. My intent was to show you what this thing looked like with the handle off, and I was not able to do that short of I think if I would have done anything more than that, you know, I'd be, I'd be basically at risk of breaking either the knife or the handle itself. Um, the force that I put on it was far more abuse than I would normally do to a knife in regular use anyway. So um, I just, as much as I, you know, I want to be able to take that handle off, it's not worth destroying the knife over. So sorry guys, I uh, wish I could have done that for you. But the one thing you do know is that this knife is very secure. It's not going anywhere. Um, even without any screws holding it in place, I'm unable to get any movement whatsoever between the blade and the handle. So once you have all these screws in tight, that thing's definitely not going anywhere. So overall, in conclusion to the actual review of the knife, 
I think it's a great knife. Um, again, I don't know that it has a lot of practical use for most people in everyday situations. Um, but if you're looking for a cool fighting style knife, uh, this is definitely one you should consider. Relatively inexpensive for what you get. And, um, you know, it, it just kind of has that cool factor with the, the D guard on it and the skull crusher and everything on it. Uh, so I don't know. You, you guys tell me what you think. If you have one of these knives and you were able to get the handle off of it, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear how you were able to do it. Like I said, um, I've done everything short of just destroying the, the handle as far as I know. Uh, and I was not able to get that off. So, but great knife. Once again, Cold Steel makes some pretty decent, uh, especially fixed blade knives at a reasonable price point. And I would highly recommend this one.